Ecologists are biological scientists that study interactions within ecosystems. These studies can focus on how organisms interact with other living organisms and or how they interact with their non-living environment. Some examples of interactions could include a plant absorbing water into its roots or an animal coming along and consuming a plant for nutrients. Pause the video and brainstorm three or more ways that you interact with your environment. Resume when ready. Let's look at an example of interactions between a cottontail rabbit, a red fox, and a pond of natural water, all three of which can be found in the ecosystem that I live in in the Chicagoland area. Using only your background knowledge and life experience, what type of interactions do you think exist between these two species and the environment? How many different interactions could there be? What factors could potentially impact these interactions? Pause the video and use both words and symbols to represent your thinking while answering this question to the best of your ability. Now there could be many different answers to the question, what type of interactions do you think exist between these two species and the environment? So let's explore a few that I came up with. Feel free to add to or modify your original thoughts as we discuss. First of all, when I think about these two organisms, I immediately consider their interaction to each other, in which I believe is one of predator and prey. I am adding in a solid arrow that points from the rabbit to the fox, which represents the fox consuming, or eating, the rabbit and stealing its energy to use for itself. The arrow is one-sided because I do not think there is a scenario where the rabbit could or would directly consume the fox. Moving now to the interactions between the two organisms and the pond, I know that both the rabbit and fox need to drink water to live, so I am adding a dotted arrow that points from the pond water to each organism, signifying that they are drinking from the pond. In addition, on a very hot day in the summer, the fox might submerge parts of its body into the pond water to cool off. This interaction between the pond water and the fox is drawn with a dashed arrow. I will stop here with four interactions, though you might have annotated more or less than four interactions on your paper. We can now observe that in this model, the fox is gaining a lot from these interactions, while the rabbit is only getting some drinking water. At this point, you should be asking yourself, how accurate is this model and how does it stand up to the reality of the ecosystem? And the answer is not very accurate. To make this example more applicable to the real world, we need to add in other components that exist within the ecosystem. So let's do just that and add to and revise our model. To be a bit more realistic, let's take into account the sun, atmospheric gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide, large trees, bushes, grass, soil, dandelions, coyotes, and humans. Let me be very clear in saying that this is still not even close to being representative of all of the factors within the real ecosystem, but it is a step closer to helping us understand just how complex interactions can be. Your task now is to create a new model of ecosystem interactions that exists between all of these factors. Please abide by these rules when creating your model. Rule number one, label each component as living or non-living. Rule number two, use different arrows to represent different interactions. Rule number three, create a key that defines each interaction. Rule number four, accompany each arrow with a written explanation of your thoughts behind each specific interaction. Pause the video now and complete your new model. In this video, we explore different types of interactions that exist within ecosystems. Consider thinking about and answering these final questions as you continue your learning. Question one, did every part of the ecosystem interact with at least one other part of the ecosystem in the model? Is it right or wrong if one or more pieces do not interact with any other piece? Question two, should there be any double-sided arrows in the model? What types of interactions could a double-sided arrow represent? Question three, did the model represent living to living living to non-living, and non-living to non-living interactions? Why are all of these interactions important to represent in an ecosystem? Thanks for taking the time to explore concepts in biology with us. We'll see you next time.